After the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix and Hamilton's comments on the Red Bull, specifically its DRS, I think it's time that the FIA finally makes a big decision. In fact, I discussed it on Wimbo's brand new podcast that you can watch at the link in the description below. But I want the FIA to finally do something about DRS. It's time. It is time for this to happen. And it probably won't be what you think it is. Let me explain. So DRS was introduced way back when in 2011, and it was introduced basically because of what happened to Alonso at the 2010 Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. Essentially, Alonso was in a title fight and was probably the favorite going in, if we're honest. And unfortunately, after his pit stop got held up behind Vitaly Petrov for lap after lap after lap, who ironically was driving his old Renault. This was at a time when the downforce on these F1 cars had gotten so out of hand. And in fact, it got even more out of hand by the time we get into the 2017 regulations and so on. And the FIA had realized that the problem for these Formula One cars was that now following was becoming incredibly difficult because it was overheating the car, overheating the tires, causing the car behind to slide around a lot, all of the problems we saw with the previous generation of car. And this meant that the car following behind had trouble overtaking because it couldn't get close enough to make a lunge at any point. And therefore DRS was introduced to allow the cars an easier time to pass along the straights. For those of you who are new around the sports, DRS is limited to activation zones on straights and there is a detection zone before the DRS is activated, which makes sure that the car behind is within a second of the car in front. It can also only be used after the second lap and after the second lap again, if there's a safety car. The idea and premise of DRS has been a good one and it's served us well over the past few years. Basically, like I said, the car behind with all of the dirty air coming off the car it's chasing, basically couldn't get close enough for more than a lap or two to make a lunge. And this made it far too difficult for even a faster car to pass the car in front and it made racing boring. So the DRS was a good solution. Now, Hamilton's comment specifically on the DRS of the Red Bull is he's saying that the DRS is overpowered on the RB19 because the RB19 was gaining around 33 to 36 kilometers per hour on the straights, whereas a lot of other cars were gaining around 20 to 25 kilometers. The insinuation, of course, then from this on Twitter was that Red Bull are clearly doing something that they shouldn't be doing or playing beyond the rules or this type of thing. In reality, that's not the case. DRS can just be tailored. And fortunately for Red Bull, they've got a car that aerodynamically is incredibly efficient and therefore they can tailor the DRS. To explain this in very simple terms, the rear wing acts like a plane wing. Instead, it's upside down. So the way it works is the air rushes over the wing and you get high pressure air at the top, low pressure air at the bottom. And this, because of simple physics, causes the wing to push to the ground. If you turn it upside down, it would lift the car up, which is how it works on a plane. And if the low and high pressure air separate too much, this then causes a reduction in downforce because that force is no longer being applied because of the pressure difference. So by being allowed to open the DRS, obviously they can play around with these pressure differences. They can cause a reduction in drag and downforce, and this makes the car faster in the straight lines. But what you can do with these slot gaps and with the actual DRS flap itself is you can play around with the angle of attack leading up to where the flap opens and also the angle of attack on where the slot actually is. So all teams are only allowed an 85 millimeter gap when the flap is open. It's very restrictive on what the DRS mechanism looks like. They're all standard, more or less. But like I said, Red Bull can play around with the angle of attack leading to the slot and the angle of attack where the DRS mechanism actually is. So what they're essentially doing in simple terms is they're losing a little bit of the downforce that they would have when the DRS is closed, but they're gaining faster straight line speed when the DRS is open. Again, to massively simplify it, what they're doing is trading performance when the gap is closed for performance when the gap is open. And the teams can all play around with this. But unfortunately for the rest of the teams, compared to Red Bull, their cars simply aren't as aero efficient. So they can't really play around with it to the extent that Red Bull can. 
Of course, also, there's some more complex things that are better for another aerodynamicist, which is they can also stall the beam wing and the diffuser by creating different pressures when the slot gap is open. But the simple answer to what Hamilton's comments were about is that, yes, Red Bull is gaining more straight line speed when it has DRS open than a lot of the other cars on the grid, but no, they're not doing anything illegal. They simply have a more efficient car, which means they can play around with the regulations even more than the rest and gain more straight line speed. But the FIA need to do something about DRS. And I told you, it wasn't going to be what you think. It wasn't going to be to make DRS on the rear wing more restrictive. No, no, no. What the FIA need to do is get rid of DRS completely. Hear me out. Like I said at the start, DRS has done its job over the past decade and a bit. What I mean by that is there was a serious issue that overtaking was far too difficult because the car behind could only follow for two or three laps at a close enough range to gain any sort of chance of passing. This was thanks to the dirty air that we saw on the previous cars. And because of that, we needed DRS to allow the cars to pass because otherwise they would just have to fall back further and further and further. And lunging was really difficult because they were losing so much downforce as they were close. Now though, we can see that the new regulations have worked. Now I know that the new regulations in terms of the cost cap and the technical regulations you could say haven't worked yet because Red Bull has still got such an advantage, but that is any new regulation set. What I'm talking about specifically is the on-track action. So when the cars are chasing each other, you can see how close they can get. We saw this at Jeddah and we saw it at Bahrain. And if you want to know what I'm talking about at Jeddah, look at the fact that the cars could get so close before turning into that last corner. So close, in fact, that many times the cars would actually stop before the last corner and just wait for DRS. And therein lies the problem for me. Look at Bahrain and, for example, Alonso's pass on Hamilton. That is the kind of pass we want. Listen to how excited the commentators even got. You don't want them to just pass in a straight line. And this is my major problem with DRS. The issue that we had before of the cars not being able to follow closely for a long period of time is now no longer the case. Yes, they'll have to back off at some point because the tires and the engine will start overheating because physics, but they can do this. They can stay closer for a much longer time. Look at any race over the past year. The cars are able to follow each other for lap after lap after lap. And that means now that they have opportunities to overtake. But of course, the driver will not overtake. What they're going to do is wait until they can just pass down the straight because it's the easiest, simplest, and most efficient way to overtake. And it means they're not risking a lunge up the inside that could cause an accident. But that's not fun racing. That's not fun overtaking. The problem is that what we really want is to go back to the way drivers used to have to overtake. They used to have to make a lunge up the inside. They used to have to brake later. They didn't just wait for the straights and then fly past. That's the kind of overtaking we want. That pass that Alonso made on Hamilton, he had to make it there because he knew that on the straights, even with DRS, for example, he wasn't exactly going to be much quicker than the Mercedes. So he knew he had to take a lunge right there. And for those of you who are saying, well, that's all well and good, but what about the cars that are slower? Well, then the driver is going to have to do what the drivers used to have to do. They're going to have to push faster. They're going to have to use their energy systems more. No one will have DRS. So instead, what the teams will have to do is say, right, well, now you're going to need to burn up your tires and push to the maximum to catch this guy in front, or maybe go on to softs when he's on mediums. It'll give us more jeopardy in terms of pit stops because it won't be able to sit back and tire manage for so long. They'll have to instead push as hard as they can. They can't count on DRS to make up for those issues. Look, no matter how you feel about DRS, you surely have to look at the last few races and think to yourself, the overtaking is now boring. Even when there is a fight on track, it just looks like a motorway pass that you would do in your Citroen Berlingo. It's boring. And at the end of the day, the drivers, if they have the option to just strategically pass on the straights and not have to play with tire offsets or make a lunge or brake late and potentially burn up a tire by locking up, they're going to do that. They're going to play 3D chess and just wait until the simplest area to pass. But the problem with chess 
is that chess is boring to watch on television. DRS has finally passed its use by date. And what it's time for the FIA to do, at the very least, is not to try and increase it for the start of the race in the sprints. They need to use two or three of their sprint races this year to completely disable DRS. Allow the teams to have the slot gaps like they have now and create these clever wings, but just don't turn the DRS on. Then you can figure out the technicals for 24 or 25. But they should definitely trial removing it at two or three sprint races and just see if it works. See if we've reached the point where we don't need it anymore. So please, for once in your life FIA, do something which is completely out of character. Make an intelligent decision. Just like these fine people watching will make the intelligent decision of subscribing.